We might be drunk, we might be drunk, as long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit, pet peeves, Rex, and a bit, maybe drunk, we might be drunk, yeah. Yo. Hey, hey, here we are. We're starting it up. We might be drunk. Good to be back. I haven't seen you all week. It's been a week. Yeah, yeah, we both went to our respected gigs and then come back and you did and you did it you taped the special oh yeah <laughs> forgot all about it tell me about it it was COVID, great covid guidelines you taped oh, the special corporate was... guidelines are tough for that you know sam uh, black the, yeah, the, yeah. the audience legendary audience warm-up or, or what do you call it, cedar she's an audience coordinator. coordinator she's a legend because one time she's so intimidating she's yeah. our, our best friend is comics because she makes sure the house is packed. Yep, yep. She makes sure people know how to behave in the show. Yep. But one time, apparently, I think it was during an Anthony Jeselnik tape, and it was someone, might have been Jeselnik, they were so scared of her that they peed their pants. Someone in the Shut crowd. Up. Yeah, they were like, I don't want to mess up the taping, and she gets people so in line. Wow. That someone pissed themselves. Oh, my God. So she's my gal. She's yeah. on our side. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah, she is brassy. She is a brassy She's broad. a real New Yorker. Is she? Yeah. I, I brought it up. She's from like the Cayman Islands and yeah, the Caspian but she's, Sea. But she's been here forever, She's though. been here forever, yeah. She banged, uh, what's his face? Oh, <laughs> Tell I What are you talking about? Well, you can't be to... saying this. No, it's, it's a joke. What's oh, that okay. guy's name? Walk on the Wild Side? Lou Reed. Lou Reed. <laughs> who's more of a New Yorker than Lou giving, Reed? I thought you were giving real goss here. No, like, I don't think no, we could do no, that. No, no, no. I'm just saying, she seems like somebody who's like, ah, I was hanging out with Warhol and all them, yes. you know, in the factory. Yes. But uh, either way, I got to, ch- I love her. She's so cool. She's got so many stories, and we got to chat and, and, uh, she said this might be the last because Delta was kicking up, so yeah. it might be the last unmasked performance wow. in a while. And I was like, Jesus! She's like, we just slid right in. We're lucky to be here. I was like, Oh man! That's what Lou Reed said to her. <laughs> there we go. There was one lady's whole job was to go <whistles> to tell you to pick up the mask. That was her whole job. So what do you mean? They pick up the mask for like, like if you're backstage and the mask is down here, she'd go beep beep beep. Wow. And he had to go, oh, shit, to, sorry. to you or to everybody? Everybody. Everybody. Wow, what Staff, a weird crew, God, talent. This year sucks. I know. I hate it. I thought we were coming out of it. But, but everything else aside from COVID was gangbusters, uh, without a hitch. I saw Taylor. We hung out. Brian Simpson and I are, are fast friends. We made love. He's great. You I never. Him? Well, anally. I don't yeah, know nice. if that counts, but he's a great guy and a great comic. Yeah, I, I've i seen the clips. Uh, he did a clip on uh, on David Spade's show back in the day. Yeah. I think I sent it to you. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it was killer. Killer, but yeah. how uh, racism is like pennies that's there, but no one no one talks about it or something. I, I can't, I'm butchering it, but smart, smart stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, great. We got. I think we got it in the can on the first one, and then the second one, I got loosey goosey, yeah, to, to the point where my reps were like, "Easy out there, Tiger." What, what do you mean? Well, I had a thing in my throat, and I did a whole like, "Oh, I did the semen." You know, I swallowed a load. It was a huge load. He was Samoan. I went off on a, like a tangent about the jizz, and it was killing. So they were the crew was like. Well, you got to keep that in. I'm like, I don't know. It's filthy. They're like, keep that. We were dying. So that's always nice. <laughs> But it's fun on a tape like to, to cut like, loose. Is, I know. It is crazy that you used to be so nervous at yes. these things, and now you're just like, I got jizz in my throat, and people are like, Jesus. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But it's cool seeing, like, we got, you know, fucking podcast fans in the front row. People are going wow. nuts. It so was, you, had, you had your people there. Oh, yeah. The drunks were there. The gays were there. It was, uh, it was a hot night. And there was a couple people who never heard me, obviously, and they were like, yeah. I went dark. I went all in. I heard you went dark. So, yeah, give me an example. You know, like, I just hit all the hot button anals, the trans, the BLM, the the, the everything, you know. <laughs> I went all in. <laughs> Men, women, gay, black, white. Did you get pushback? No, nah, not really. I couldn't say retard. That was oh, okay. the big push. But then Brian Simpson said it, but... He threw it in with the N word, so it's kind of in the mix. So Ooh, you that's couldn't really, smart. yeah. It's like putting pill on food, right there. Yes, right? yeah, exactly. And when I said the N word, uh, it was tough to swallow as well. But what are we drinking? <laughs> uh, today we're drinking the today we're drinking the last word, which Ooh. is uh, classic. I think it was the N word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic cocktail from uh, Detroit from the twenties. Oh wow, yeah. uh, it's nice. And it's um, it's it's from Detroit in the twenties. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, yeah. What's the history? 
So the history is that it was at the Detroit Athletic Club that someone made it up, and it was made from their um, own like bathtub gin. Wow! So it was like you know the gin was really rough, so they had to dress it up with a lot of things. Wow! So this is uh, once again like the paper plane, uh, like all equal parts, uh, but it's three quarter ounces. Ounces. I know I neglected to mention that last time, but it's three quarter ounces. Uh, so you gin. take it on a plane. So <laughs> you can take it on a plane. Exactly. Uh, it's three quarter ounces gin, three quarter ounces uh, green chartreuse, and uh, three quarter ounce lime and Luxardo maraschino. Liqueur. Damn. Jesus I see you got Christ. your math checked out, by the way. The, uh, the comments kicked you right in the fanny on the uh, algebra there. On the fractions, they really gave him the business. Did they? Yeah, they're like three fourths, three fourths, three fourths. This guy knows how to add, huh? <laughs> well, it's just ounce. That's it. They're, they're cruel it. out there. But you know, well, we loves, uh, you know, loves bathtub gin. Whitney Houston. All right. She died I was, in the tub. I was, <laughs> I was on the road Thank the you. night she died. I remember the night she died. I was in Knoxville, uh, Tennessee, opening for a comedian who, who passed away recently, Spanky Brown. What? Do you know Spanky Brown? No, that sounds made up. No, well, it's, uh, he was... Uh, so I remember that night because it was the night Jeremy Lin dropped 38 on the Lakers. Lin Sanity. So, so I remember... I This is the tweet I remember from that night. I forgot who said it, but someone tweets, holy shit, Whitney Houston died. That's Lin Sane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, Twitter, man. Man, did he have a run. The, the city run. was a buzz it with Lin Sanity. Speaking of buzz... Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Beer Jew. My doctor, he told me to watch my drinking. Now I drink in front of a mirror, all right? <laughs> he ran my blood. He opened up a tab. I'll tell you. <laughs> now, gin might be the least desirable alcohol. You think so? I think so. It depends. I, I know people who drink gin and soda, drink gin straight. I think Ricky Velez drinks gin. Gin tonic. Damn, yeah. that is amazing. That's a good drink. Woo, that's a summertime drink right there. Yeah, dude. I know. Oh boy, it's oh boy. Hot. That is delightful. This Thank is you. good, man. Danny boy. What is, it's called, what is it called? It's called The Last Word. The Last Word. Ah, I like man. it. That is good stuff. Yeah. I was in Kentucky all weekend. Uh, this feels mm. like a Kentucky on your front porch. Yes. Type of, I'll tell you, man, that city, I'd run on Hirschberg opening for me. If you don't know his comedy, check him out. R A A N A N Hirschberg. Dude. Killer. Dude is. He's got high energy and great jokes. He is a hard follow. He's uh, he's loud. He's brash. He's funny. He's smart, and he's high energy. Like he's sweating up there. Oh, he got off one time, one night, and he was sweaty. And I was like, "Oh, you work way harder than I do up here." <laughs> I'm literally leaning against the stool. I respect that. I mean, oh, for sure. It's a, it's another testament. I, this is horrible timing, but uh, I, I met him when he was boozing like yeah. 20 years ago and uh he was a he was a son of an onion like he was an old drunken sailor like yeah. he was can cantankerous <laughs> yeah couldn't get he, that out he was yeah and he i remember that's why i met him in cincinnati go bananas uh and he had an edge he did yes. definitely an edge he was smoking cigarettes yes. he was boozing he was like a angry little poet yeah he was yeah. he was he was like a little Tiny Jewish Hemingway, and uh, but it, still funny back then. Then he cut, cut off the sauce, and, and now just, he's just a just a happier dude. Happier dude, yeah. funny as hell, killing. I feel like he's got some credits, and uh, he's at the cellar. He's he's gonna be big. I think he opens for Whitney every now and then. Yeah, you Whitney, the other guy, not bad. <laughs> this is unreal, Dan. He's good, killer. You're a really cock cockologist, top this notch. Is, this is delightful. Mm. I'll tell you, it's like one of those. He kills. He would kill so hard in front of me. I would have to open with local stuff yeah. just to just to get them. That's the move. Because I don't have that energy. I just I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to. So I had to. I I had some Kentucky bits from the last time I was there. My opener was uh because I went to the racetrack, you know. Yeah. So I, I was the worst dressed person there. I was the only one who didn't look like a villain in Django Unchained. <laughs> so I opened with that. That saved me a little. Did some horse racing jokes. Yep. Got them. But damn, I I was sweating for the first couple minutes for sure. Yeah, and I wasn't yeah. moving. I was sweating because I was like, "Shit, he's he killed." He kills, but it's a testament to the to the writing because you have to come up there and you're not going to tap dance. It's just going to be on well, the basis of the jokes. He, well, he's got the jokes and the energy. That's true. That's true. He's going to pass all of us. Let's be honest. <laughs> and he's not drinking. Oh, yeah. we're ruined. Yeah. This is uh, the problem with this dance. Is it's too good. You got to suck them down like lemonade. It's real good. Like the only three quarter ounce gin, so 
you'll be all right. If only Whitney was in a tub that late, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'll tell you, good teacher really seems to care. Right? Yep. I can't. So that's my new drinking. I have like a, a I have like tick. Tourette's with yeah. Rodney now. <laughs> Roddy Rutz. Can you? Uh, what, what do you think about the guys who wake up in the the bathtub with the ice? You know, they're like, shit, my uh, spleen is gone. You ever hear about that? Is that a myth? No, I think that I think it's their kidney, not their spleen. Oh, the right? kidney. Yeah. That's right. Well, they. Uh, I mean. It's funny, the ice bath, it's either that or uh, you had a great workout. Yeah, you're like an athlete. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're either Joe Rogan or you just got left in a Motel 6. Right, you got yeah. shanghai or whatever. <laughs> I did a gig in Portland once and I took the Shanghai tour. You know what that is? Where? Shanghai is where you're at a bar, somebody knocks you out with a blunt object, and you wake up on a fishing boat in the middle of Tahiti or whatever, and they go, yeah, get to work. Shanghai. You got Shanghai. I didn't. I'm just saying. I, I did the Shanghai tour where they they tell you what happened. Damn. That was a big because Portland's a big port town, obviously, and uh, they they throw you on a fishing boat with a bunch of like Mongolians, and you're that's it. I'm gonna be there soon. Oh well, keep a head on a swivel. You've been knocked out at a bar before. I have. I wasn't knocked out. I was just hit twice. So I've been hit in the face in a bar. Damn. Yeah. Thank uh, God for the Jew helmet fro. The Jew fro saved me. Yeah. It's, it's padding. It's, it's cra- it is padding. I had longer hair. It was one of the things where I needed a haircut and I just didn't get a haircut. And I had that. My mom was so mad at me because she followed me on Instagram and I was posting like Insta stories with the cops making jokes about it. I had still shards of glass in my hair, <laughs> but I was like, what am I going to do? I'm like, I need, I can plug these gigs. I'll do so. I was doing it. And the cops are rolling their eyes, but I'm like, ah, right, you better get this guy, <laughs> officer. And they're just like, all right. And my mom's like, what? She called me. What the fuck happened? I'm like, I'm sorry. Damn. Well, I know about the, that was Vermont. Yeah. What was the other one? The other one, I was, uh, I do, I, it's part of the st- White Knight story when I do that, but it's just, I gloss over it quickly. Mm. But I was, uh, I was in a bar in Seattle with uh, a comic, Andrew Rivers. Oh, he's funny. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he's funny. And, he, and we were together after shows years ago and- this woman just kept insulting me to the point where I just finally, like I was talking to a friend, she kept being like, she could do a bit better, she could do mm. it like, and I was just like, uh, I said, why don't you get some more Botox, you lizard? That's what, <laughs> shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I don't feel good about saying that, but that's what I said, and uh, her boyfriend just decks me. Whoa! Pretty good, he's a big guy, too. And I was like, it was one of the things where he got a pretty clean shot at me, and he's a big dude, and I was okay, and I was kind of like, Whoa! Hmm. <laughs> That's it. Maybe you got a good jaw. I don't think I do. I ah. think I, I think I got lucky. Like maybe I don't know what happened, but uh, where would he get you? The cheek? Like the... right here. Oh, that's he got that's me pretty a good. Pretty and good I, spot. And I remember I did this, and I did the whole like I did the. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, the bartender handed me, I got broken up pretty quickly. Some guy stepped in. Oh, wow. And I was drunk, so I just like was like walking close, ah. something like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, bro- it bro- broken up. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of badass to get hit and not go down. That so is I was cool. glad about that. He hit me, and I just did that shit. And uh, I bet she brings that up in five years. She's like, you're not a real man. He's like, fuck you. I always stand up for you. He's like, remember when you hit that Jew? He didn't fall. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. You know that haunts me. You couldn't even knock down that lanky pussy. <laughs> you're not a man. Uh, it's like, you bitch, get out. I mean, you got a good tail going. Like, you got like you got hit with a bottle. Or was it a glass or a bottle? Oh, a pint glass. He a took pint a pint glass. glass. So his hand was pretty badly cut, too, because he just did psh, right over oh, the head. Oh, so yeah. you got hit with a pint glass. You didn't yeah. go down. Or you didn't get knocked I out. I was in shock, for sure, because you just don't expect people to do that. I know, but and you got I a, can't fight. You got a good rep going so far. Like that's two major hits, and you you, you stayed stayed strong. I'm telling you, you got a we got a legacy. I really stayed here. strong. I just didn't collapse. You didn't I, collapse, but yeah. I think most people. Get, I got hit with a um yeah. a bottle once uh, in college. This guy hit me at a fraternity party. Hit me with. And it went, it shattered so good that it just didn't hurt that bad because it just shattered immediately. If it shatters, it's better. Yeah, you look good. You look good. So I went, Psh, and I had blood. I was like, Jesus. And the blood went like that, like Apocalypse Now. Damn. And I was like, who wants some? And they were like, no, oh, no, no. But I was terrified, but I had the blood coming down. So everybody's like, ah, you're good, man. You're he's good. crazy, dude. Yeah, he's you, fucking crazy. Don't became, mess with that guy. You became a legend that night. Yeah, yeah. It was a foam party. So a I foam was, party. Uh, you remember those? No. Oh, uh, maybe that was a Southern thing. You'd run a warehouse and you'd buy a big foam machine. It would just blow bubbles. And then, like, women would go in with bikinis and every guy oh, had a nice. boner. And it was just like this bubble fuck fest. It was amazing. I wonder, remember ice luges? Oh, yeah. I wonder if those are dead because of COVID. Oh, that's right. 
I love those. Yeah. They get so cold, and whenever you see one, you're like, this is going to be a rager. You're drinking poison. You're drinking poison, but if, if it's on ice, it's it feels right. classy. Yeah. You know, it's that big block. Somebody had to buy that thing. And then you gotta like, you're like, well, the clock's ticking. That thing's going to melt, so we got to do a lot of shots. Hell yeah. Yeah, Good those times. are classic. Yeah, man, the, the fight thing, I didn't even do shit. The Vermont one, I did nothing, honestly. Like, the guy was just talking shit, and I made, like, a sarcastic comment back, and mm. I took a fucking glass of the head. I was just <laughs> Carmen Legala. Uh, I really, really, it's like you really realize who you are as you get older and you're like, well, I'm not a fighter, but I'll get a good line in before, that's before all, I that's get more hit. Important. That's more important. I always think important. of that Ron White bit, you know, that joke where he, the tater salad oh, bit? Oh, it's a great One joke. One of my favorite lines, he goes, uh, they, they arrested me for being drunk in public. I was in a bar. They threw me into public. <laughs> Arrest them. <laughs> that's a great bit. Man, he's good. He has some stories where you're like, that is, like that whole album, uh, Drunk in public is like it's another it's level. It's killer, and just the delivery is so different. It's so old school with the cigar. He has the cigar into his contract, so he can, even if it's a non-smoking building, he's allowed to smoke. Damn. Yeah, and he just holds a, a I guess, tequila or whiskey and a cigar, and just stands there and delivers. That takes years to perfect. People don't realize that. Like that guy is like a real orator. Yeah, man. I remember that book, I Killed. He, there's road stories about all those comics, and, and his was the guy gave him a bad review, and he just sent the guy a little pint of whiskey and a razor blade, and the note just said, just in case you're ever in the mood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard that Fitzsimmons story? He got booked to do a college in Iowa or some Idaho, some like super hillbilly kind of corn town, and they said, be clean. He goes filthy bombs or no he kills but because he goes filthy they said that was an immoral act you you should be ashamed of yourself it was against god they wrote a whole letter they didn't pay him whoa and then like years later he won an emmy or something i'm butchering the story but he won an emmy or something big and he had the thing framed and sent it back to him oh no he told this that he read that thing on stage at the emmys the, wow. the letter or something oh but pull it up man either, either way it's he went. Either way, he sent it back to him and was like, hey, I'm still still immoral. I don't know. It was great. It's I love all, when the good guy wins. It's all bullshit. Like when you're doing a corporate gig and they're like, that joke's offensive. And you're like, I did it on Fallon. I know. I, I know. did it on the squeakiest clean late night show. It's, I know. Yeah. I had a good moment the other day. I was doing a set. And I had the lady in the front row going, ah, ah. You know, like that thing. You know, like that's yeah. that's inappropriate. Ah. And I, I go, I'm sorry, I like dark humor. She goes, I like dark humor, too. And I was like, I don't think you do. <laughs> and then I, I said, I'll prove it. And I did a Holocaust joke, and she went, ah. And I went, see? And I got a huge laugh. But uh, it's just like they all say I have a great sense. No one's ever said I don't have a great sense of humor. No one has ever said that in I history. Know. No one's ever said it. But everyone thinks they have a good sense of humor. Everyone thinks they do. We're the professionals. Mother Teresa, Gandhi, everybody. She famously liked the good AIDS joke, though. <laughs> but, yeah. That's true. I heard she was wild in the sack, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah. So it just annoyed me because I was like, you don't. You, you know. say you, you, want the, you want the cool credit for liking dark humor, but you don't. You think you're fun, okay. but no one in your life... Is telling not a lot of people have someone in their life who just is like, "Hey, you're not fun." Yeah, that's a good friend right there. That is, but I mean, but you lose a lot of friends when you're not fun. Exactly, so you don't have a really good friend to tell you. Right, they usually have friends who go, "No, you're great. Screw that guy. He's a dick." Because <laughs> that takes less energy. Exactly, <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to be like, "Hey, we need to talk." And you're like, "What? What is it?" You're like, "You just are just. Uh, you're dreadful. Yeah, you're terrible." No uh, one wants to have that talk. That's like no, the thing where yeah, I couldn't do that. It'd be tough. It would be tough. I couldn't do it. I've had you can do a side thing like you're bad at this, but to just yeah. go you to the core are shitty. You don't understand humor or have concepts. You don't have no concept of what is funny. You can't just say that to a person, right? You can't. But there are people that don't understand jokes. That's true. <laughs> Some of them at our shows every yeah, weekend. Yeah, but uh, and they think they do, and they think they're an expert. But you know, at the same time, uh, it's been pretty good lately on the road. That's like, true. Man, that club, Kentucky, Lexi Comedy off Broadway. That's a magical room. Magic room, a lot of history, and you just. I mean, I feel like an asshole because yeah, here Kentucky, and you go toothless, uh, hayseed, straw hat guy. You know, sipping out of a, a moonshine out of a barrel with three X's on it, but. It's, it's a nice great. city. It's a nice city. It's a nice city. Beautiful rolling green hills and the horses and the whiskey. I love it. Yeah, Kentucky freaking rules, man. I love it.
George it, Clooney from Kentucky. Is he? Muhammad Ali and Diane Sawyer. Damn. I think I'm right there, Peters. <laughs> Give that a goog. It would be great if you just made up all three. Uh, that would be impressive. <laughs> I went on uh, Jim and Sam the other day. By the way, they're back in studio. It's fun. I got to go back. Just I was cause... supposed to go on tomorrow, but I'm too fucking... I have too much this week. It's 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 early. I'll give you that. It's so early. Yeah. But they buy you breakfast now. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> You're <laughs> That's so why easy. I did it. <laughs> You're so easy. Like, you can't afford a fucking egg sandwich. I know, I you know. You cheap bastard. There was no food in my house as a child. It, it's, it triggers me. I hear free breakfast. I'll go to Kuwait. Um, but either way... <laughs> We did this whole rant about we got no me and Jim got into this big fight about music. He's like, I love this band. I was like, White Zombie, get out of here. They he suck. Likes, he likes like hardcore. He likes uh, metal and yeah, dark Aussie, and edge. Yeah. And I was like, What about this band? And I'd be like, Van Morrison. He's like, Ah. And then, I'm, and then he went, You like Dave Matthews? I was like, I do. And then he went off on it. And then it was like this great back and forth fighting, fighting, yelling. You and, like Dave Matthews? Well, then the mics cut off, and he's like. That was great radio. I was like, yeah, I don't like Dave Matthews. I was just doing that. And he's like, ah, oh, great. And we high-fived, and that was it. Yeah, you just try to be entertaining, you know? Yeah. Then I got a bunch of messages like, thanks for defending DMB. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're a fucking martyr to these people yeah, now. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, man. Now, there's certain rooms, though, you just, like, you do feel, you feel connected. It's crazy. Like, there's yeah. a magic. You talk about that, like. The, you know, yeah, Richard Belzer did blow in this room. You just wow. sense that. I don't know, but you sense that shit. Yeah, oh yeah. We've, I know we've made that comment before, but um, wait, what? Give me another weird band you like. Well, no, but I, I'm with you on the room thing. Yeah. You can feel that, like Zanies in Chicago. You're like, oh, I can feel that Jay Leno was in here with a For shitty sure. blazer in '84. You know, um, this is fucking good. Oh yeah, it's Dude. so good. I'm trying to like stop myself. It's tough. Do you have a peeve? I do actually. Hold on. I got a bunch. Give me, give me one. Give me one, because I don't want to take All right. up. Well, uh... here's one, and I know I've made this to some degree before, but we've done a lot of episodes and we've done Patreon, so I don't know if I, which one I did on. But this is I have two. First one, I'm on a flight yesterday. Uh-huh. Guy sitting next to me is on a FaceTime call. We're on the ground. He's on a FaceTime call. I no, hate FaceTime. No headphones. Oh. So I'm just like listening to his buddy and. Here's the other thing you if you're if you're in a public enclosed space and you're not doing the public enclosed space voice, you're a monster. Yeah. If, you, if you're like, hey, yeah, I'm on a I'm on a flight. If you're just like, yeah, so I told him, suck my dick, yo. You're, <laughs> you're just doing that voice on a yeah. fucking flight. There's other people around. What are you crazy? Cause here's the way to know if you're doing something dickish. Imagine everyone else on the plane doing it. It, it would be chaos. It would be chaos. So, but for some reason, you can do it because we're all behaving. We're all decent human beings. That's was, the test. It was crazy. And then here's how weak I am, by the way. We're in Delta Comfort, and uh, he schmoozes. This guy is reckless. He schmoozes the flight attendant into giving us the first class snack boxes. Oh, and then well, I got I like one too. So he, but that. So then I'm like, wow, he's all right. Then we land. The second we land, he's on FaceTime with no headphones again. I'm like, fucking cocksucker. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> I bookended it with FaceTime. Uh, yeah, that is a problem. Yeah. I hate, and just. For some reason, FaceTime, it's as brutal as it is, it's worse than a call. Even a call, I'm like, all right, this guy's a douche. But a it's FaceTime, a, it's, it's a, like- It's a phone woo! call on speaker. Yes. And also, I'm seeing your friend, like, this is like a party you're throwing right. yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you're doing a podcast. He it's also brutal. took his shoes off on the flight. Ah, That's bare, a bold move. Bare feet? Socks. All right, all right, all right. I don't, I, you know, socks are stinky too, though. I know I've worn those true. feet. Yeah, it, to me, it's very weird. With like, the, I know you're like, my feet swell up when I fly. Cool. Still don't want to see them. Yeah, yeah. And also, my socks. If it's a woman, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with a woman. Women sock. do, but women go shoeless more. Women do right. like the sandals more. Open toe. Men have gross feet. They really do. I'm it's sorry. a hoof. It is a hoof. It's bad. It's it's you belong sweaty. in a fucking stable with a jockey on your back. You're uh, disgusting. The knuckle hair, like the toe hair. Ugh. Ah, my toenails are yellow like the sun. I have talons. I could catch salmon with these fucking feet. <laughs> They're disgusting. I'm with you. It looks like a velociraptor. I'm trying to come in. <laughs> it's bad news, but yeah, men's feet are horrific. I'm not one of these guys like no man should ever wear flip flops. I get it. You want to wear a flip flop, but. Some people can't even stand the sight of I'm gonna a man's I'm going to go ahead feet. and say no man should ever wear flip-flops. Well, if you're going to like a steam room, a pool, a sauna, I'll give it to you. If you're going out in public, it's a bold fucking move. It's very That's all bold. I'm saying. It is bold. What about in the subway? 
I don't want any of that shit in this. So, look, the subway's tough because it's like, what am I going to notice your fucking feet when a guy's dick is out to my left? Like, exactly. it, it's tough. And yeah. also, I do. Here's my subway protocol. The one that bothers me more than anything. Number one is obviously the toenail clippings. Oh, you're get a, out of you're here. a psych. You deserve the death penalty. Yeah, that's I horrific. Think you should be shot in the face with a you know, like Taliban style. Yes. Then <laughs> second, I think. Um, they behead, I guess, whatever. Yeah. But uh, they could be foot. The the stinky food on the subway. That's a problem. That's a problem, dude. Yeah, stinky food on a plane is bad too because yeah. it's sealed. It's At least sealed. the subway opens every now and then. True. Yeah, it's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bullshit. And it's bad for you. <laughs> George Garland. What what do you what do you got for I, th- This one's kind of specific. I like the specific ones. Okay, I, you went specific last week, and I I was into it. All right. And this is another lady problem. Sorry, gals. <laughs> labia time, but that's we a, a we horrible a, kid show. We, we, need a, we need a segment called lab, The Labia Corner. <laughs> so uh, this is, I think, I think only specific to my dame is she'll go, I got to go to the post office. You want to go? And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to the post. Why would I? Yeah. That's a chore. You're you're doing errands, but you you're trying to invite me like it's some kind of fun event. Quality time. Yes, it's quality time. And I'm like, yeah. no, I don't want to go to the post office or the DMV. I don't want to go anywhere with that shit. And she's like, oh, you don't want to hang out with me? I'm like, uh, now Here we it's go. A, now it's a hangout issue. Way to spin it there, sister. <laughs> she's a spinster, is what she is. She spun. That's a smart women jujitsu move. It's it like, is. oh. Oh, you don't want to hang out with me? I'm like, no, I don't want to go to the post office. I'll hang out with you. You want to go to the park? You want to go to the meadow? You want to frolic? You want to run through the sprinklers? I'm in. I, I would hit her back with, I'd love to hang out with you. Why don't you go there another day and we'll watch a movie at home? Oh! Put it right back on her. That's what are you going to do now? That's good. I'd love to hang out. Take your dick out. Let's hang out. <laughs> this thing's <laughs> the, hanging. The Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Do you see him blame uh, being Italian on it? No. That was like the big thing. He was like, you know, I'm a, that was the whole Fox News post was like, uh, Cuomo, I'm not a pervert. I'm Italian. Uh, this is my culture. Uh, that's I'm great. I'm going to sell out my whole people. <laughs> I love when people use their culture. This Uber driver stinks. It's our culture. It's like, all right, well, you still stink. Or celebrities now, too. What do you Jake mean? Gyllenhaal, he's like, ah, we don't need a shower. I saw that. That's a weird one. I kind of dug it. You dig it? You wow. You're not a big shower guy? I, I think it's bad for you. Well, often, I don't think it's bad. I think we do it too much. How often do you shower? Let's see. Four times a week. How much? How often do you sweat, though, like work out? Maybe once. Okay, so... Twice, three times a lady, but it's summer too. Also, winter. I'm, I'm, I'm down to three days a week. Winter, yeah, I, I think that's acceptable. How often do you do you wash your hair? And how, I'm, I'm talking like soap versus wash hair too. I think hair wash is overrated. I think we do it too much. I think yeah. it hurts your hair. Yeah. All the water, the shampoo, condition, shampoo, condition, rinse, repeat. That's just uh, the fat cats in Washington telling you what to do. You don't really need to rinse and repeat. Yeah. But I'd say hair wash twice a week. Wow. Yeah. You got sebum up there. You got essential oils. Yeah, I think we wash our hair too much for sure. But it's funny when like a celebrity says that shit because you know, like, you know that he's like, he's got something that we don't have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got some shit at home where he's like, yeah, I don't need to shower because yes. I have these creams that are $900 a tube. Right, right. Exactly. So that that's a different story. But I do think we uh, we overdo it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, back to the lady. Yeah, she got me on that one, and I. But I held my ground. I was like, I do not want to go to the post office when I don't have to. And she was like, All right, fine, whatever. And I think that's the key. You got to uh, stand tall there, like you getting hit at a bar. <laughs> what is? Is this a different drink or the same? This is the same one. All okay. right. Jeez. Last right, word. Thanks. Let me know. Yeah. Anything with Campari is good. Right, you drink you Capari know. alone, you want to kill yourself, but you drink it with something, it's amazing. All it's right. kind of like uh, Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback. You, you, you pointed to me. I thought you were going to say me for a second. Oh, no. I, it, was oh, your, it was your joke. What? what uh, but yeah, that's my peeve, no, well, and I'm sticking to w- it. Women trying to, yeah, it is. Just say, like, hey, will you come with me? Yeah. Don't, don't disguise it as something. Don't, don't try to serve me shit and say it's a sandwich. Right. 
Exactly. You know what I mean? exactly. I, that's, that's kind of like a Southern expression. <laughs> Don't try to serve me shit and say it's a sandwich. This guy's in Kentucky one weekend. All of a sudden, he's foghorn leghorn over here. I don't know. <laughs> that would be a better show, just a kid's show where he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking cocksucking rabbit. Uh, who, was he, who was foghorn leghorn again? He was the big rooster in, uh, I yeah, think it was yeah. Bugs Bunny. And he would be like, yeah, I say, I say, I say. You got to drink that uh, last word. I'll get the last word. I'll tell you. Would. My last word is a woman should not have the right to choose. <laughs> Woo. Uh, my what buddy, we do in the choice. afternoon, I mean, of course. <laughs> Post office activities as such. Oh, yeah. By the way, Cuomo, uh, speaking of FaceTime, good. who had more FaceTime than Cuomo, huh? He loved <laughs> touching a face. It's such a weird move. Yeah, that's where I'm like, maybe the Italian culture, maybe there is some truth to it, but he also got off on power and shit. Sure, like, sure. Like that dude. It's it's funny how much they're like, Chris Cuomo advising him. And I'm like, it's his brother. Dude. Like, what do yeah. you expect? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's fucked up. And yeah, it's not ethical. But you're just kind of like, what's, what's it going to do? Like, oh, my brother's calling me ignored right, I, right. wouldn't it be shittier if he didn't do that if he's like <laughs> i've got a show so yeah i had a, a my that was my angle was they should do a podcast together and chris never speaks <laughs> dude it's uh it's weird it's kind of like it's the end of the guy's career probably i mean what's he gonna do now i yeah i think podcast is the only route or stand-up he, he can, can do like a My Name is Earl type show where he knocks on all the women's doors and being like, <laughs> let's sit down and talk about it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, there's not much left. It's a bummer. And they had a, his dad had a, had a hell of a it was run. A powerhouse, yeah. yeah it was, and it he was, was a the dynasty. killer. He was like the young killer that you brought in. I mean, it's tough when you're known as the asshole. Right. But I think you can't get too big in America. Like he was the guy Cuomo sexual. He won an Emmy. I mean, every girl was like, Cuomo, I'm into Cuomo. I was I like, know. where is this coming from? Mulaney Except did a the thing about that he him. the girls that touched. Yeah, that's true. Not they, every girl. They weren't as vocal till later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like he got big and then taken down. But so. I also think it's a, like, there's truth to that where like, oh, you know, obviously people were talking about like, maybe he'll swoop in and run instead of Biden. Like there was talk like that. Totally. That's how big he was getting. He should be the president. And now it's like, man, he would be Democratic Trump. That's exactly yeah. who he'd be. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. He definitely, you're right. He got too big, but I think he was just probably hell to work for. I think he treated people like shit. Really? I don't you think? I, I mean, don't know anything about him, really. To I be mean, honest. if you're, how many of these aides are going to like speak out? Yeah. You know? That's the problem is they, the sheer numbers. It's like, what is it, up to nine? You know, nine, ten women. So you're kind of like, this I is, think this best case scenario, he's a shitty person. Right, right. I think he's gotten kind of gotten his way so long. You know, with dad being so high up, sure, and then money and the nipple rings. Don't get me started That's on the nipple rings. That's weird, man. Yeah. How many politicians have nipple rings? It's got to be just him and FDR. I mean, <laughs> Wiener had clamps, but I don't think he had the ring. <laughs> but now what? We got the new the new governor, Co yeah. Kothal? Koth? Yeah, what's her Matt? name? What's her name? Look at Co so, I'm gonna. She's got an interesting last name. I think it might be Polish. I don't know. I can't remember it. But uh, I didn't know a governor did anything until Cuomo came on the scene. Thank well, you. What do, what do you got here? Is this in the ground? Looks like classic to ground. Oh, you jealous or what? I am, but this is really good. It's a hell of a last word. Negroni is, I would say, like top five cocktails ever. Wow, is that is that too bold a statement or what? No, bro. What What are your top five top cocktails five. ever? On the my spot. top five. Yeah. yeah, my number one is a really nicely made, super super ice cold, filthy dirty martini. I'm with you. Can, can we do one of those next episode? Hundred percent. All right. Cool. I'm a vodka guy though. Me too. All right. Let's do it. Wait, kettle one, Grey Goo? Uh, honestly, like, vodka's vodka, you know, as long Dude, as it's not, like, bottom it. shelf. Like, okay. But kettle's great. I like kettle's okay. clean, nice. I also I like potato vodkas. Mm. So, like, uh, you know, the Polish potato vodkas, like, you know, Chopin, Belvedere, things like that. It's a little insensitive to the Irish <laughs> with the famine, <laughs> but I get it. I love it. All right, so that's number one. Give me number two. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's a top five cocktail. Number two, uh, Manhattan. That's my number one. Whoa. So. Absolutely. I'm waiting for the for colder months for you for the Manhattan. I already got that lined up. Uh, and then number three would be like Negroni or Old Fashioned. Old Fashioned is in the top five for sure. Interesting. 
Okay, good list. And what else we got? I think I got one more. And um, you know, besides that, I would do some like uh, like something like offbeat, like uh, you know, like a Corpse Survivor number two is really good. What, I don't, the, what the hell is fuck that? Is well, we'll that? do that later. Don't worry. A corpse oh. Survivor, man. Is that someone who gets like actually. necrophilia, but they come back and they're like, he touched me. <laughs> It's a hangover <laughs> cocktail that's all booze, but you don't know it's all booze. Really? Yeah, it's really good. Wow, I'm well, into right, it. So I think we do a martini next episode, and we do a Corpse Survivor the episode after that. Is that is Hell that yeah. Good? Deal. Oh, all right. I'm excited. What's that old joke? Uh, my parents, ah, uh, I, I don't, tell my parents I was a necrophiliac. Oh, I'm going to butcher it. I can never remember a joke. Hold on. Let me think of it. Shit. What, what do you got, Matt, on the name, the lady? Kathy something. Kathy who? Hokel. Oh, Kathy Hochul. What do you got? A Hochul. Wendy's uh, drive through here? <laughs> Jesus, I can barely hear you. That thing is Do you work for the MTA, Matt? What the hell was that? <laughs> Next up, Helm. <laughs> hey, hey, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Honey. You got to love Honey. I mean, come on. You shop online. We all do it. You buy shoes. You buy groceries. You buy toilet paper. And we've all seen that empty promo code thing just taunting you. And you're like, oh, if only I had a promo code, I'd get half off or a percentage, something. But I never have one. Who has that? You go to some shoe brand, you're like, ah, I could get I could get a real discount here, but I never have it. I always wonder who does. Well, now, honey, is the free browser extension that scours the Internet for discount codes. When you're ready to check out, honey automatically applies the best one. Instant savings. Honey has found its customers over 2 billion clams in savings, supported by over 30,000 stores online. Buy anything from tech, gaming, beer, wine, you name it. I, I saved on uh, some sweet kicks. Thanks to Honey, put that code in. Got a discount. Shoes are expensive. Get a break. Tell them how to do it, Fatty. If you don't have Honey... Uh, you, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free, installs in just a few seconds. Save some dough and support this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash drunk. That's joinhoney.com slash drunk. And get that honey, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, so we got, uh, all right, that's interesting. Can I give you another peeve? Please. I had an issue with, all right, so... I had an issue with, you know, sending my girlfriend. I, I made a bit of a mistake, so I sent her I'm flo uh, I'm sorry flowers, pro flowers, all right? Oh, I love pro flowers. I don't. Uh-oh, here and we I, go. And, and I'll tell you what. These people, I'll tell you. They're only the go-to because they come up first on Google, let's 1 be honest. There's 1-800 flowers. Oh, there's 1-800, yeah. It's not the first time they fucked me. Ah. Um, but, That's yeah. The uh, Cuomo's AIDS. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to God get it in. damn. You're hot today. No, no, no. So then the we are, which is what Cuomo said to his AIDS. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> AIDS. Um, so, mm, mm, what mm, were we mm. saying? Mm. Oh, uh, flowers. Flowers, yes. Yeah. So I send her, I'm sorry, flowers. They don't deliver them. All right. They mess it up. They deliver it, but they're like, no one's in the office. And I'm like, well, you got to make them sure that they're that day because she's on the road. That's how I'm sending them. Mm hmm. They were like, all right, we absolutely it's gonna be there that day. They don't send it. And oh. it's like the whole thing where they're like, the florist is closed. I'm like, okay. So you got you're admitting that you're like a second hand, you know, right, whatever right. bullshit Upcharge. middleman company. Exactly. Whatever. So then um I call the next day and they're like, we're it's definitely gonna come the next day. I'm like, she's leaving in like a day. Yeah. It's they don't and it's one of the things where like I it's fucked up because I'm furious, but I'm also like I'm sent. The guy keeps saying I'm sorry, and I won't accept it. Yeah, and I'm sending I'm ah. sorry flowers. <laughs> this is a bit. It might be, yeah. But I'm like, I'm, I'm Ugh. like, and he was like, he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, that's not good enough. I'm like, holy shit, I'm her. Yeah, you're like, you gotta send me flowers now for your fuck up with the flowers. <laughs> I've turned into the woman. And yeah, then, wow. Well, he keeps fucking up. We never. Yeah, I was like, he's me. He's a shithead. Yeah, <laughs> he's so, a piece of shit. Did she get him? No, we didn't. Ah. I know. I got refunded. And see, this the problem is the lady. Sorry, <laughs> ladies, I'm, I'm calling you all one unit. 
You don't know the hell it is to get flowers. You really don't. Every guy on the day before Valentine's Day is scrambling, going, she, they got to get there by this time. This is the building. She works at this office. It's a nightmare. And then they never come on time. You got to redo it, blah, blah, blah. And then, then they finally get them when it's too late. And they're like, thanks. And you're like, it's, oh, I went through hell. It's high. These holidays have an incredibly high. They give women incredibly high expectations. And they're not that high. Look, we should be able to meet them. But at the same time, like, if you don't meet them, you're just in the doghouse. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you're relying on this dude who doesn't know you or give a fuck about you. This dude's to... in fucking Mumbai. Exactly. He gives a fuck about me. Yeah, he's like, I'd kill for a woman, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lady carrying a jug over here. <laughs> whatever that, whatever happens over there, but you know. <laughs> it's a this privilege. Is, this is worse than the fucking labia segment. This is, <laughs> this is the... <laughs> labia time. Woo. I love it. Yeah, but that is a bitch. It was a bitch. And never got them. See, because I, I used to open for a woman, and she would be like, look, I'm going to level with you. The only reason women like flowers is because you got to fucking get off your ass, go to a website, pull out a credit card. We like that you did something. We like that you put some effort yeah. in. And I'm like, okay, so if I actually plucked the flowers, you wouldn't. She's like, no, no, that's no good. I want you to pay. I want you to sting. Well, plucking the flowers is probably, I think it's a gesture. I think it's just like you fucking put work in. Yeah. But if we plucked them, they'd look like shit, let's be honest. So, like, right. they like the presentation. They like that it's, I don't know. Well, do women even give a shit about flowers? I think they do. I think they, they try to come off, uh, oh, what do I, I'm a feminist. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm empowered. No, nah, you like flowers. I'm sorry. You like the effort. You like the thought. It's all thought. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at every movie. You got to kill the dragon to save the lady in the tower. If you didn't have to kill the dragon, she'd be like, so you just showed up? <laughs> the dragon was dead. Like, are, you yeah. compa- are you comparing slaying a dragon to logging on to proflowers.com? Yes. The dragon's easier because there's no fucking expiration date and QR code and all that. <laughs> the dragon's cut and dry. I don't know. I hate the credit card system. It's not good. This this segment's dragon. <laughs> no, I think uh, <laughs> the, the dragon is. Uh, but Look, I just man. say it's just taught. It's in, it's 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 ingrained in us. Like you got to jump a big hump to get to the lady. Yeah, and I if think, you want to get a big hump. Yeah, right. It's no, it's a work. It's I'll tell you. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah. give your girl your mom's ring. I think they're kind of like. That's I want you to buy a ring. Yeah, but they but that's a good one because they can't say shit. I know. It's, it's exactly. a family. It's a family tradition. Yeah. That's kind of fun. My mom is the least, I hope she never hears this, she's the <laughs> least aware woman on the planet. She'll be like, do you want to go to the nursery, the plant nursery with me at 7 a.m. tomorrow? And I'm like, why would I ever want to do that? Like, I don't want to go meet Richard Pryor at 7 a.m. Like, what are you, crazy? You would meet Richard Pryor at 7 I would, I would. But I'm just saying, like, I don't even have, I've never shown any interest in plants or botany or anything or a greenhouse. And you want yeah. me to go at 7 a.m. on a set? What are you, insane? Like, you yeah. want to shake her by the shoulders and shake her. <laughs> but she'll be like, do you think Do you think your lady would love this ornament from uh, my great-grandmother? I'm like, yeah, you know, she might. But really, she's going to p- pretend to care and like it. I don't know. It's just my mom is, is tough in that way. What, uh, give me a good wreck. All right, here's your wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went, into, I went into full therapy there. I liked it. I, I think you've seen it. I don't know if you've seen it there, bear, beer, Jew. But I saw this. It changed my life. The waterworks, the whole thing. Val. I haven't seen it yet. Oh! I'm going to watch it this week. I almost watched it last night. My God, is it touching and real? This son of a bitch filmed a his whole fan. life yeah. from when he was five. He had a video camera, home movies. I mean, the the tear jerking in this. It's, it's incredible. Un- unbelievable. And it's all just his life. Like the, the editing is unbelievable. They put it all together in, in a perfect narrative, and it gets to him to this day. And the shit he went through and the struggle, and he's got so much integrity. He's a real artist. I really am a big fan of Al Kilmer, for sure. I always thought of him, oh, he's an actor or whatever. But now after this, I'm like, he's one of my favorite guys. You know, in Tombstone, when he's got the tuberculosis, he's laying in the bed. He's on a bed of ice because he wanted to look. He wanted to know what it felt like to be that cold. Damn. Like he went all in. And all these movies were like, you're the hot guy. You're this. You're Batman. Or what he was like, 
All right, great. I'll be back. It wasn't his fault that that Batman sucked. I know. Because that was that was a hot crowd. That was a hot cast, rather. I mean, yeah. You had had Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face. You had you had Jim Jim Carrey. And like in theory, it could have been cool. Like that kind of fun. Damn, that's right, Nicole Kidman. So Joel Schumacher directing, who did The Lost Boys and all these other huge movies. So he's like, I grew up with Batman. Of course, I want to be Batman. He he was in Africa doing like a safari when he got the call, and he was in a bat cave. I don't want to give too much away, but it's. It's fascinating, and the, the trauma this guy went through and the death. Kiss and Kiss the, Bang Bang is, like, one of my favorite movies of all time. Great movie. Great comedy. But he got labeled as difficult. Like, they show him on Oprah, and she's like, I heard you're difficult to work with. He's like, I just want to be an actor. I feel like I'm so disappointed with these roles in Hollywood. I, he, like, he, grew, he was the youngest person ever accepted to Juilliard. Wow. Yeah, so interesting guy, real actor, real method, the whole thing, and... Uh, I mean, it's such good footage. He got bumped by Kevin Bacon in a, like a school or a Broadway show. And then he's like, all right, I'm second to Kevin Bacon. This guy's a star. And then Sean Penn bumps him. And he's like, God. And that's when he's like, all right, now I see what Hollywood's all. It's all about who's the it guy. You know, and it's all about the industry and they don't give a shit. I mean, it's really, it, 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 it hits home. Damn. Check it out. Well, Watch I'm, it with I'm, the lady. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I will. Um, yeah, he's he's great, man. He's a great actor. Great and, actor. And he's like, he's always been good at like any time. Like, it's crazy. Top Secret, he's fucking hilarious. That's his first movie. Yeah, and then you put like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, he's hilarious. And then you just had, he was like action movies and stuff. But Heat. Like, Heat. Yeah. That ponytail, dude. I know, I know. That That's one of his better roles, I think. Because he's like, I got to work with De Niro and Pacino. And he's so excited. And then his hero was Brando. And then he got to work with him on... Island of Dr. Moreau, which was a shit show, yeah, train it was a wreck. Mess. Yeah, I mean, the, that. Uh, Brando is so. What a character, man. But what a fall. I mean, that guy, he really. Brando? Oh, my God. He went nuts and, like, he was. He, you ever see that clip of him throwing yeah, up the N-word? he was N-word? famous since the 50s, dude. Oh, I no, mean, I'm, like, I'm a fan. a fall, but it's like that guy was famous for decades, you know? Yeah, but he, he kind of. He went all nuts and then he kind of ate himself to death. But that scene of him on. I think he's on Larry King. He's just like. N word this and the Jews run the media. He had to apologize to the Jewish coalition. Or but he whatever. loved Jews too. That was the other thing. Is like Brando is like studied under Jews for acting. I mean, he like had so much love for Jews, and I think he was just nuts, man. He I was think. nuts. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think he had a racist bone in his body. I mean, I, he was all about like. I mean, you see what he did at the, the Native, Native American the American. Oscars. I mean, I think Brando was like kind of ahead of his time. A little bit. Pretty crazy. I mean, yeah, holy shit. I mean, it is funny that he did that in, like, the 70s. And then <laughs> and they were like, the Indians should be a team. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking red face. No, yeah. uh, Brando, man, I, I think, of like, that dude's range is fucking oh, stupid. He's the best. He's probably one of the best of all time. I you mean, were... I think On the Waterfront's a top 20 movie. Yeah. Could have been a contender. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. It's fucking masterful. That is a great script. It's beautiful. A streetcar he's incredible in. You got Stella. guys and dolls. Yeah. They yeah. call you lady lock. It's fucking incredible, <laughs> I dude. mean, the Godfather, get out of here. Godfather, Apocalypse Now. Yes, yes. Um, that motherfucker. You ever heard that old Norm joke about about Brando? He goes, uh, Marlon Brando made some you know, derogatory marks towards Jewish people, and he had to apologize to the, the Jews in Hollywood. And they accepted the apology and allowed him to work again. <laughs> so it's an old joke. It's an old that joke. That's fucking hilarious. That was a weekend update, Norm. Damn. That, you can't, could you get away with that one today? I don't think so. I don't think. I mean, he had 20 minutes on OJ killing his wife. Yeah, but he got fired over he it. He got fired over it. Yeah. Damn. Um, He's a guy uh, you're like, does he have money? I always wonder. Norm? Like, I guess he does yes. the road. Are you kidding me? I, I never know who's got money and Are who doesn't. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't tell. I don't think he's, I don't think he's loaded. I think he's loaded. All right, all right. Think about how many sitcoms he's been on over the years, how many shows he's been on over the years. Norm has got money. All right. I worry about guys like him. I wouldn't worry. I would worry about, like, uh, there's a lot of people in L.A. I'd worry about before <laughs> Norm. i put it that way. All right. Have I, you driven under an overpass? Good point. Good point. Yeah, that's true. L.A.'s, uh, LA's in trouble. But, I, you know, I don't know if that guy under the overpass has got a great uh, album. Yeah. No, he's. I think Norm's doing all right. All right, just checking. He's got a son. 
He's. I think he's okay. Okay. Still eating cereal. You want to be like, come on, man. You can't. You can't drive. Eat cereal. I can't drive. He I lives in an apartment. I live in an apartment. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> no, but I feel I, attacked right now. No, I know you're doing fine though. You got a nice lady. You got a mom around. You're. You're. You're doing okay. I'm all right. Yeah. You're all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. Uh oh. That's but no. That's, that's he's Matt saying his net worth is fifty two point five million. That's but that's bananas. Those are all like you look you up. It's going to be like twenty something. Yeah, you know? those are all out of whack, but I appreciate them. But, I think uh, that helps with the ladies. That would be a good Tinder profile. You know, if you just, just wrote this, picture. my net worth. Yeah, you'll attract some real quality women <laughs> with that with that profile. Uh, well, you know, when you're on Tinder, you're not trying to, you know, bring somebody home to mom. Yeah, fair enough. What uh, what else should we talk about? Should oh, we do a bit? What do you got on a wreck? Do what you do have, have a wreck? Yeah, I do. Did I do? Did I? I didn't do this last week. Did I met uh to die for? No. It's on Hulu. It's a Gus Van Sant movie. I I've love seen, Gus. I've seen this movie. This is the third time I watched it. So it's uh to die for. It's starring Nicole Kidman, young young Joaquin Phoenix and Ka- uh, Phoenix and Casey Affleck. And uh, Matt Dillon's in it. Wow. Uh, what a cast. Great cast. Wayne Knight from Seinfeld Whoa. is in it. Oh. Uh, he's what, great. What is it, 95? 90s, around then. Yeah. It's, you know what the tone of it is? It's written by Buck Henry, who's also in it. Who wrote The Graduate, who's a genius. What? Yeah, Buck Henry's a fucking American oh my genius. God. So, uh, it's incredible. It's, All right. It's the tone. If you like the movie Election, you'll like this movie. I love Election. It's that tone. Okay. It's like, it's a dark as hell comedy that is like the way election is a gold standard satire mm-hmm. this is the same to all me. right wow you know? really yeah yeah nicole kidman's incredible in it i think it's the second straight week i've wrecked the nicole kidman thing but what uh was last week on the undoing oh yeah but i'll tell you this movie is like so I, I laughed out loud so many times it's just about a deranged person who wants fame more yeah. than anything and a holy shit did it make me think of a lot of people we know? <laughs> you got that right. It's great. And young Joaquin's incredible, He's man. He's amazing. It's it's a great. Uh, oh, uh, what's your Elena Douglas is great in that. Oh, she's always fun. She's always great. It's just a great. I love Gus Van Sant, man. I do too, and and it's cool because I used to work at Blockbuster, and I would see that box to die, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be some kind of she was hot. like porno or kind of like. NC seventeen, but it's it's actually this type of movie you would have rented with a kid, and you're and you're just like fast forwarding yes, for, for the yes, sex scene, yes. and then you're like, this is it. <laughs> it's just really sharp satire, right? Right. I had that with Time Cop. A lot of fast <laughs> really? forwarding. Oh my god. Was there nudity in that? Oh, Mia, Mia, whatever, Mia, Sarah, the the chick from Ferris Bueller. I never saw it. Oh, I never saw it's Time a fun Cop. Van Dam. Uh, if you like an action romp. Yeah, I never he, saw. He it. goes to the future and has to fight himself. It's it's a lot of fun. Ron I highly Silver. recommend to die for it. It's on Hulu if you have Hulu, and uh, it's like, it's really fucking funny. All right, yeah, that's a great wreck. Really funny. Nice little throwback. Yeah, you. It's weird, man. The mm. '90s are like classic now. Isn't that weird? It's fucking bananas, and I I just got to get used to it and get over it. Isn't that weird, man? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see kids kids ironically wearing a nirvana shirt and i'm like oh shit <laughs> i wore i went you know to a nirvana show not Did really you? i actually didn't but yeah, i, I like, could have i went to see limp biscuit and i regret it you saw limp biscuit my friend had an extra ticket i'd never been to a concert he's like you never been to a concert i'm like no except for jazz and blues and shit in new orleans but uh, we went and it was i hated it it was all they had a couple songs though not not for me i hate the hat the backwards hat a and the 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 like fake faux rap is it rap is it metal what are we doing here is it rap is it punk is it yeah, yeah is it, what is it not into it and it was all that angry shit like give me something to break i'm like i'm not that angry <laughs> I'm okay I'm, ha- I'm hanging out i'm, I'm 11 be great if they started rioting and just destroying the <laughs> set he's like no not this yeah please yeah yeah exactly yeah. just one of those days i'm like ah. you don't want to wake up yeah everything is fucked everything sucks i'm like you're just like hey, this was not exactly uh inspired lyrics no you know? yeah. i feel like i have more angst now you know you always hear the angsty teenager i'm like no i was cruising as no, a teen I no, had you're, you're less angry than you 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 have less angst uh 
I think you're more together now than when I met you. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. I'll take that. You've gone to therapy. You've you've become a better person. I think. Hey, you're, you're, wow. you're more. I I think. I don't. I know. mean, I think I'm I'm not saying about good or bad person. I'm just saying like you know like fuck you, mom. I never had that growing up. I, I like think, my mom. I think you have you had more of it when I met you than you do now. Mm, really? You had some anger when I met you. You think? Yeah, I think we both did. Oh, okay. When you're a young comic, you just have some fucking anger, man. It's like the like the business is still fucked, but I think that we had less control back then. Ah, good point. Good point. And we internet. were just younger. We just didn't understand. Like we, I think we have more. Look, I'm still lost, but I think we had less of an understanding on on life. You know. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, hey, that's that's one to grow on, or <laughs> what? What do you call it? That's a good note to end on. Or wait, what about a bit? We gotta do bits. Let's all do right, a bit. I got one for you. All right. So I think I brought this up last week. I decided to try it as a bit. I think there's something here about. So I told my dad I can't ride a bike, mm. you know, and he was like, he was like making fun of me about it. He was like, <laughs> you can't. He's like, you can't ride a bike. That's hilarious. And yeah. I was like, you're my dad. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, it's kind of like if you're, it's like if your girl, it's like if your girlfriend or wife was like, man, you never get pussy. Oh, that's you know, great. something like that's that. Great. Something there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good. I I'm like just that. I'm like, man, if if only there's someone who could have done something about this. <laughs> right. That's great. That's a great twist. Something there, right? Yeah, good good perfect comparison. We can do that on the Patreon. If you haven't signed up for a Patreon, it's patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. Mark wants to take me bike riding in yes. Central Park. I'm terrified. I will get the bike. I'll get a city bike. We'll get Salacuse, we'll get Peters out there, maybe we'll get drunk, who knows, and uh, no training wheels, I'm going to hold the back, I'm going to dress like a dad, wear a cardigan, have a pipe, I hope you have like a hat with a propeller on it. I have, gonna... I have a helmet I'll be wearing. All right, perfect. And we'll do the grass, and then we'll eventually get you going on the sidewalk, and you'll never forget it. I'm, I'm nervous. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> it's going to be great. What do you got? You want to have a bike skill. I feel bad that you're walking by city bikes and bikers all day going, I can't do that. That's yeah. going to hit the psyche a little. Nah, nah probably not. It doesn't. No, I mean, okay. like, it would if it was, like, necessary for living in this ah. city. Like, if, if I, if I was, you're acting like if I was in a wheelchair and I saw people walking. I'm, I can walk. I can take the subway. <laughs> I can take a cab. I'm yeah. not. I, I can still get around. Oh, well, let's say you go to Atlantic City with your lady and- you Yeah, the... That, that's the honeymoon destination. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go to the Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, All and right. she goes, we got the whole day off. Let's 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 go bike riding on she the pier. She knows me. She know, why would she do that? Why would she go, let's do something that you can't do? Wow, does she know you can't? Because yes. I didn't know you couldn't ride a bike until two days ago. Yeah, she knows okay. because she was terrified when I left L.A. and was like, I'll ride bikes during the pandemic. She's like, please don't. Uh, I don't drive. Yeah, no, it's absolutely not. All right. All right. Well, we're, I'm going to show you. It's 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 super easy. You're an athletic guy. You play basketball. You athletic? swim. Well, you swim. I swim and I shoot baskets. Okay. That's that's enough. Something. It's that's enough. enough. It's enough. That's it's all enough. I need. It's just getting my cardio enough. Up that if I get the Delta variant, I won't die. There I feel like you that's go. The plan, you know? <laughs> that's a good health health barometer yeah. right there. Uh, all right, how about this for a bit? Hit me. So these drinks, by the way, I holy know. shit, Dan! I know. I'm You're trying get me not fucked up to to black out here. One more. We got a Patreon. I, I can I have I have a thing I have to do after this that I cannot be. Uh. I have to ride a bike. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? All right, so um, you know the. Got engaged. The girlfriend's always like, you got to post about the engagement. I want some engagement posts. Post, post, post. And I'm wow. like, why do I have to post? This is our thing. Who cares I about the public? I saw another post. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> so so I'm like, why? Why? This is between us. It's the, you know, matrimony, bond or whatever. And she's like, just post about it. It means a lot to me. It's a special thing for me. And I'm like, well, I hear that. I get that. Okay. I, I agree. And I go, well, we had a threesome once. So I'm going to post about that. Did you? Yeah. And uh, and she's like, well, I don't know about that. I'm like, well, that was special to me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but this is a bomb between two people. I'm like, that was a bomb between three. <laughs> you know, three beats two. That's a great bit. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sure that's already hidden. I tried it once and it, it, it did okay, but I can't find my that's, footing yet. But that's That was between three is is a great line. Oh, you like that? Okay, okay. Did you try that line yet? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the only laugh it got, but I was 
you it's know, it was tough freewheeling. Here, in the setup, it's tough because it's like, well, obviously you share a wedding photo and not of course, a threesome. So of that, course. Like, obviously there's that flaw in it at the gate, but like the, the, the bond between three line is killer. Yeah, she's like, that's, yeah. but the wedding, like I dreamed about as a kid, I'm like, I dreamed about this as a kid, you know, and then yeah, I do yeah. a whole thing where like, a wedding. I told my friends about this. Well, I told my friends about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. And a wedding for a, a, a girl is like a threesome for a guy because you you envision them the same way. Who are we going to invite? Where are we going to do it? <laughs> that's good. How much is it going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it needs some. Did that, uh, hit? that didn't do great, but uh, the other great. part did. How much is it going to cost? I thought that was going to hit too, but it didn't. That's comedy. How for many you. times have you tried it? Once. I give it another shot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, uh, yeah. She hates the bit, but uh, I'm also like, hey, we're talking about the engagement. You wanted yeah, more exposure. You know. So. so there could be something about like, you know, the th- and look, I'll be honest. The threesome wasn't all as planned. You know, it was the same as my wedding night. To- <laughs> no, I'm not going to say something, <laughs> something about my best man, I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> but that's right, not right. it. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to think like um, wedding. Yeah, I was trying to avoid uh, something about I didn't eat the fish. The fish. But I'm trying to avoid that that part but yeah yeah it's something there's got to be more there you know like my mom loved it you know yeah something like that um that picture i guess it, i and, and like and she's right because uh we don't have any pictures in the three-way but we've got some great video <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good <laughs> that's good there, yeah that's good that's something yeah that's funny you know i'll put that on instagram yeah, they, they blocked it. <laughs> um, it is weird that like it's it's very it's the wedding, very the wedding shows that to the woman that you're serious. The three way shows the man that she is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, how come ladies get their thing, but we can't have our thing? Well, you did get your thing. Well, I mean, like publicly. If you're not really gonna publish, no, I mean, no, you, no. you got to. I think that's the the bit is is you just keep going with the three way versus the wedding. right, right. And you've got the angles. I think the cost is funny. I think, uh, I think you planning the three way oh. the way a woman would plan would plan the like we were just like uh, we hire a what, planner. What do we do for the food? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, what do we, uh, exactly. That's good. I wonder I, if there's a joke in like I object or some that guy in there or yeah. the priest. Yeah, there's a lot here. There's a lot to play with because weddings are so big that there's a lot of uh, angles to go down. Damn, Just, I can't believe you had a three way. I, I actually didn't. I made that up. Oh really? Yeah, but it's for the good of the bit. That's yeah. That's I was gonna be like, damn, I fucking. I ran a buyer. She was like, yeah, whatever. Oh, to do on stage? You mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, can I say we had a three way? She's like, ah. Go You're nuts. a comic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all for the joke. That's yeah. what people don't get about jokes. It's all mechanics. Well, I, some of it, a lot of it's true. Is the truth? I mean, I, I, or, or like you know, if it's a story, it's definitely true. I think it, it. There may be parts that you like. Like I've had bits where like I end on, and I'm like, well, that ending is like a little Tweaked. doctored. Yeah, but like, it's it always comes from a real place in some way. Yes, yes. The real place in this bit is like, well, if we had a threesome, I'd want to tell people exactly you know and you want to tell people about your thing yeah you know but i just think it's weird when people are like i do a school shooting joke you know kids when i was growing up kids yelled shotgun now kids yell that in the classroom and people are like how dare you make jokes about school shoot i'm like it's just the shotgun shotgun like that's all i saw there i was like that's a bit that could be something you connected something to I make, connected to something make, to, in your mind to make a, a fun dark joke yeah like, I'm you're not mocking, promoting you're mocking your age versus this age I mean that's yeah. that's it I got I got a I got a homonym or a homophone I've or whatever I've been about mass shootings now my act right now it's like you know I, I feel like I, did, I had in the last one too but now it's a more personal bit it's about me like teasing a kid until he threatened to shoot up the school and it becomes a whole story uh huh you know yeah and I feel fucking guilty about it so that's why I'm talking about it but it we're cool. I mean, he comes to shows now. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's one of those things where you're like, oh fuck. It's like it turned into a bit where I feel guilty. Right. So that's why I made it a bit. Right. I was like, it's like my confession. Yes. You know. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, we didn't. I mean, at least I didn't grow up with school shootings. Really. 
I oh, actually had Columbine I mean, was I was in ninth grade, so maybe yeah, I did. I, I guess. mean, I still remember the rock bit. Like, we didn't have any friends. There were six of you motherfuckers. <laughs> we don't have six friends. That's three on three with a half court. That's a great bit. Great bit. He opened with that, too. That's a fucking amazing. Trench coat mafia. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I see white kids come on now. I jump <laughs> off the elevator. Like, that was the whole bit. I mean, that was, uh, yeah. That, that was, was legendary. That, that was legendary. It, it is. I am scared of young white boys. That was the opening. I remember yeah. being like, oh, my God, he's going in. He's going yeah. right to Columbine. It was so good. Yeah, I definitely wasn't scared of school shootings when I was in school. No, and now kids, no. it's one of the things where like kids have to think about that. Well, you Isn't never, that crazy? That's an insult now. Like we were like fat, ugly, gay, and they're like, he, school shooter. Like that's an insult now. Like how many roasts have you seen where they go, Joe List looks like a school shooter? Like it's a go to glasses, nerd look, school shooter joke. Yeah. That's new. Not new, but new ish. Isn't that crazy? That's that crazy. Kids have, kids have to worry about, I mean, that's the thing is like we all saw guns in high school. Sure. Like I grew up in Manhattan and I saw guns. So it's yeah. like I damn know I damn sure well know you suburban kids saw them. Right, right. You know, like that's crazy. They use that's something you have to think about. That's stress on a kid, man. That's great. Yeah. I'd have been in my last special. I'm like, man, now getting held back is a real threat. That was my angle. <laughs> like, do you, want, do you want to go to summer school, please? I've already done two tours of freshman year. That was a <laughs> two joke. Two tours. Yeah, that was that, that was a bit I had on, on school shooting. But like, I remember that. But they fucking, that's a real thing, man. Well, I mean, I feel like the inner city schools kind of had a metal detector thing going on. But then when it hit like white schools- I love schools, when a club has metal detectors. I do too. I love metal detectors. I love them. But it's not great with my hip, my fake <laughs> hip, but no. Um, but it's the same hip that had a three-way? <laughs> it wasn't easy. I had to, <laughs> to really tighten those bolts. But I just think it was big. But it's funny how like black comics are always like, when it hits white people, that's when it becomes a story. It's and true, it's true. Though. It's so it true. true. When it hits the Sandy Hook or Columbine, it's a fucking news story. No one gives story. a fuck about uh, about Chicago. I mean, that's that's the truth. I mean, like, there's so, such so many shootings in Chicago. More than Iraq yeah. have died in Chicago. It's crazy. It's all it's things crazy. But horrible. then it's weird because like I have black friends who are like, don't ever bring up the Chicago thing. White people always do that. They I'm always like, do it. It's okay, true. Well, it is true. So do we bring it up too much or do we not talk about it enough? It's it's a tough line there. For sure, for sure. No, it's true. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Guns are just, I, I'm just not a gun guy. They scare the shit out of me. I'm not, although, you know, I know some of you are listening like, well, you're not a bike or a car guy either, <laughs> Sam, so shut the fuck up. I could teach you how to shoot a gun. We'll go to Central Park. We'll do a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in Oklahoma. I was just in OKC, and uh, Liz, who runs a club there, who's, she's great. Oh, uh, yeah. She was like, Let's go shooting tomorrow. And I was like, I'm in, but I'm fucking, I was too tired. Mm. I, I saw, but I was like, I would love to go shooting. My friend, you know, Chris Allen, he was in the sure. military. He's a big gun guy. And he took me in, uh, I think we were in Dayton and we went to the gun range. And I was He's sick. He's too as a into dog. Sopranos. He would scare <laughs> me. I feel like he would make a joke, like, you big mouth fuck. Right. But the thing with guns is just so real. Like, you're like, bam, bam. You feel that pop and that kickback. And you're like, whoa, this is wild. And you can turn it sideways and. You can end a life. It's a lot of responsibility. I'm not a big gun guy either, but- They uh, scare me. Yeah. It's well, just, just weird. I'm just- uh, It's too intense. I don't like anything that definite. I don't like yes. a balcony. I don't like a fucking <laughs> balcony. I don't like anything that, that could be lead to permanence. Yeah, I, I don't like. You. I don't like a wedding ring. Ah, <laughs> hey, nobody does. <laughs> but you're right. I, I, I'm with you with the definite. We like light. Yeah. We like in and out. We do the road. You're in to Kentucky. You're out of Kentucky. We're you cowboys, know? man. We're yes. fucking. We're literally rolling up on a horse. Uh, well, they like guns. Hey, well, they like guns. But we're, we're rambling. We're ramblers. Yeah. I love it. We're not really cowboys. No. I mean, we did fuck no. that one time. But uh, <laughs> other than that. I can't quit you. <laughs> That was a good movie. Great movie. Great That's an movie. underappreciated movie. Great movie. It's, it's, I heard Mark Wahlberg turn down the Gyllenhaal part. Ah, oh, big mistake. But then he, but then he's playing. Do you see the trailer for his new movie where he plays a dad where his gay son kills himself? And no. like that's a more Mark Wahlberg role, <laughs> where he's just like, I fucking failed you as a father. Uh, oh no, I haven't seen that trailer. It's rough, man. He's a punchline. But, he's a good actor. No, though. he's not bad. He's not bad. Boogie Nights is great. Boogie Nights is amazing. But uh, I wonder if Gyllenhaal's like, 
Damn, I fucked a dead guy. Yeah. yeah the guy he fucked is dead. Yeah, it was acting though. That's true. <laughs> That's think, true. I think I think I think his wife was probably more like I fucked a dead guy ah, than, than yeah, the guy he point. acted with. Was he married? He was like estranged, I think, from Michelle Williams, wasn't he? Uh, Didn't they have a kid together? She's a hell of an actress. She's great. Heath Ledger rolled, man. Killer actor. What a what a way to go out Dude, too. Broke back and and the Joker. dark night oh, is dark how you night. go is how you go out. That's kind of legend. And the, could you give me two more different roles? Yeah, than a good gay, point. Than a gay badass cowboy. Good point. And the Joker. Yeah. Speaking of Val, his I don't want to give too much away, but his wife leaves him because he's always like obsessed with his roles. So she 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 bails. So there's a price to pay for art. Is he is he together with someone now? I don't think so. Well, then also the throat thing kicked in. That's tough. Yeah. Poor guy. I know. He's such a sweet guy. I mean, you, you got to watch I remember it. he tweeted about Bargazzi's album years what? ago. Do you remember that? No. He tweeted about Nate Bargazzi's album being like, what a wonderful comedian or something like that. You're like, Whoa. oh, I love that guy. Yeah, he's, he's all heart. I mean, he's, he's integrity. He's sweet. He's nice. He's got two great kids. The kid narrates the whole thing because he can't talk. Oh, my God. Could you imagine not being able to talk? It's We, we take it for granted. We do podcasts. We do stand-up. This is everything. The voice. Poor guy. He's. Yeah. The, uh, will he ever recover? No, I don't think so. Fuck. I know. I know. That this is all wrapped up in the plot. You gotta. You gotta see it. I mean, take a night off and really turn the lights out. Get a popcorn. I'm at the cellar later, but I'll probably. I'll probably watch it later. Tonight. Watch it after. Damn. Ooh, poor it's guy. Heavy. You too. You could use a little pain in your life. <laughs> but we got to wrap this thing up here. Where uh, we yeah, going long? Give some road shout outs, man. I'm in I'm in Portland, Oregon, uh, Royal Oak, Michigan, Boston, Let Laugh Boston, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Millersville, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, fuck, uh, Millersville. Mo- Moon Tower in Austin. I think it sold out, though. Nice. Then I got, uh, what else? Fuck, man. I'm everywhere. I'm fucking everywhere. You're everywhere. You're on the road, and you're grinding it. That's what it's all about, building Sam material. Samarell.com slash shows for tickets. I'm just checking my miss. Oh, yeah, St. Louis. Oh. Uh, Helium in nice. Missouri. They got a new manager, finally. Indy Helium. Good room. Springfield, Missouri. Man, I'm really hitting up Missouri. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get COVID at this point. <laughs> Chicago, the Den, Denver Comedy Works, fucking Cobbs in San Francisco, Stand Up Live. We got great gigs Damn. coming up. I can't wait. So it, it's going to be great. And uh, yeah, shit. It's going to great gigs coming up. Samuel.com slash shows. See you there, man. Careful in SF. I hear it's uh, Wild West out there. These Is days. it? That's what I hear. Well, yeah. it's November, so. Ah, okay, okay. Hopefully it's better by then. I, I'm sure it won't be, but... And, uh, who knows? Hopefully it's better uh, when flu season starts. Uh, oh, yeah, flu season. I forgot about that. I'm at the Arlington Improv, Appleton, Wisconsin, Skyline, Funny Bone, Albany, West Palm Beach Improv, Comedy Connection in Providence, Comedy on State in Madison. Comedy on State, the GOAT. Nashville, Rochester, Richmond. Oh, all great. All good rooms. Portland, man. Boston. Atlanta, Buckhead Theater, try my theater chop. We'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, get on the Patreon. You're missing out. We're doing, we're going to unbox these motherfuckers on uh, Patreon, see what's in them. Could be SARS, could be a bomb. Anthrax. Anthrax, I don't know. COVID, Delta, Lambda, who knows? Come on by. We go. We'll read your emails. Pex. Uh, we might be drunk. Pod at gmail dot com. Email you. us. Uh, Patreon dot com slash. We might be drunk. Pod. We're growing pretty quickly. Leave us a nice review. And Fat Cat will be sitting right here pretty soon. We Don't got you a, worry. We got a sweet design. You guys are oh, gonna yeah. fucking jizz. Good over looking this bottle. You'll jizz in your own hand in a hotel room. Hey, that's, <laughs> I told you that in confidence. This is terrible. All, All right. right. Thanks, guys. Bye.